however, is presumably not planned as a specialized air superiority fighter like the Su-57 is. Its concept of operations seems to be based on American notions about how to run a fifth-generation fighter aircraft. Not much is known about the specifics of the J-20's avionics and sensor suite, but the Chinese jet seems to incorporate an active electronically scanned array, a chin-mounted EOTS, a passive infrared slash electro-optical DAS, 360-degree spherical camera system, and passive antennas for an advanced electronic support measure suite, similar to the F-35s and slash ASQ-239 system. The J-20 also seems to have improved data links, integrated avionics, and a cockpit with a display similar to that found on the F-35. Indeed, the J-20 presumably features avionics that are essentially comparable to that found on the F-22 and F-35, but which are not quite as polished as their American counterparts. Russia and China are both developing next-generation, fifth-generation fighters as they attempt to undermine American control of the international system. However, the two big nations are adopting somewhat distinct ways of constructing these new next-generation machines. Those disparities are driven by a multitude of factors including threat perceptions and requirements, as well as access to technology and financial resources. In terms of overall kinematic performance, the Su-57 is likely a superior performer compared to the Chinese G-20. With its three-dimensional thrust vectoring capability and enough power, the Su-57 is anticipated to have an exceptional low-speed high angle of attack maneuverability even with the existing Saturn AL-41 F1 after burning turbofins, which are rated at 32,000. 500 pounds thrust apiece. The Russian jet should also have extremely good supersonic performance, with some degree of supersonic cruise capability, even with the present AL-41 F1 engines. However, once the Su-57 received its second stage, Saturn Isdalai 30 engines, which are expected to deliver roughly 28,000 ohms of dry thrust and 42,000 ohms of afterburning thrust. The PAKFA should be able to achieve kinematic performance, including supersonic cruise and maneuverability, roughly on par with the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. Indeed, as one now retired military official with substantial fifth-generation fighter experience had told me some time ago, performance-wise it clearly seems to compete with the Raptor. While the Su-57 boasts superb aerodynamic design, the Russian jet is significantly less stealthy than the Chinese Chengdu J-20, let alone American stealth aircraft such as the F-22 or the Lockheed Martin F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. While neither the J-20 nor the Su-57 is very stealthy compared to American fifth-generation fighters, the Chinese aircraft places more emphasis on radar cross-section reduction methods than the Russian jet. The Su-57 has numerous obvious radar cross-section hotspots, including its rounded electro-optical sensor ball, which shows no effort at faceting, its movable leading-edge root extensions, where the leading-edge flaps meet the outboard portion of the wing, its engine inlet design, and a host of other problem areas. In short, the Russians purposefully elected not to stress stealth in the Su-57 design. By comparison, the J-20, which seems to have been primarily based on F-22 and F-35 technology, makes much more of an effort at notably frontal radar cross-section reduction. While some analysts make the spurious argument that canards are not compatible with stealth, there are plenty of American stealth aircraft concepts and technology demonstrators that have used such aerodynamic features, including Northrop Grumman's proposal for the Naval Advanced Tactical Fighter and Lockheed Martin's own early Joint Advanced Strike Technology, JAST, which eventually evolved into the F-35 development work. That being said, the J-20 does feature several visible radar cross-section hotspots, particularly in the back of the airframe. Nonetheless, the Chinese have added advanced stealth elements, such as faceting for the J-20's electro-optical slash infrared targeting sensor, EOTS, housing, 
liberally adopting principles from the F-35. Moreover, the J-20 also similarly strives to disguise its electro-optical slash infrared distributed aperture sensors, DAS slash missile warning system, MWS, in a similar fashion to the F-22 and F-35 designs. The Chinese fighter also has F-35 style diverters inlets, which marginally compromise aerodynamic efficiency, but are more conducive to stealth and ease of manufacture and maintenance. Overall, the Chinese J-20's airframe form is significantly more suited to stealth than the Su-57 air vehicle design. The Chinese aircraft presumably falls considerably below the Su-57 in terms of sheer kinematic capability, both in terms of maneuverability and high-speed supersonic capabilities. The challenge the Chinese face is that Beijing lacks a jet engine that can effectively power the J-20. Right now, the J-20 seems to be powered by the Russian-made Salyut AL-31 FN engines, which provide roughly 32,500 olbs of afterburning thrust each. However, some reports imply that the Chinese are installing early production J-20 aircraft with Chinese-developed thrust vectoring WS-10G copies of the AL-31FN, a more powerful and suitable indigenous 40,000 olds thrust class WS-15 is under development, however, it is not clear when the Chinese will be able to consistently mass-produce that engine. Theoretically, with the upgraded engine, the J-20 should be able to travel supersonically. But even then, it will undoubtedly lack the Su-57 maneuverability. In terms of sensors, it is unknown whether aircraft is more advanced. It is evident, though, that the Russians and Chinese have radically distinct conceptions of operation. The Su-57 was never developed as a genuine stealth aircraft and includes a sensor suite designed to nullify Western stealth aircraft. The Russians are expecting the Su-57's sensor suite which incorporates N036 L1 01 L band radar arrays, will warn its pilots to the general vicinity of enemy fifth generation stealth planes, such as the Raptor. Tactical fighter sized stealth aircraft must be tailored to resist higher frequency bands, such as the CX and Ku bands, as a matter of physics. Those aircraft show up on radar operating at longer frequency wavelengths in the L band. However, the track is not precise enough to engage a target with a missile. However, the L-band radar, part of the N036 Bielka radar suite, narrows the search area down so that the Su-57 can scan a smaller volume of space with its X-band N036-1-01 and N036-B1-01 active electronically scanned array apertures. The radar is further augmented by the 100 and 1 KS Atoll electro-optical targeting system and the L-402 Himalayas electronic countermeasure suite, which would help further refine a track from the L-band radar. The assumption is that a targeted search by the Su-57's other sensors would result in a weapons quality track to engage a fifth generation fighter, such as an F-22. It's a good theory but it is far from guaranteed that it would work in practice. The J-20, however, is presumably not planned as a specialized air superiority fighter like the Su-57 is. Its concept of operations seems to be based on American notions about how to run a fifth-generation fighter aircraft. Not much is known about the specifics of the J-20's avionics and sensor suite, but the Chinese jet seems to incorporate an active electronically scanned array a chin-mounted EOTS, a passive infrared slash electro-optical DAS, 360-degree spherical camera system, and passive antennas for an advanced electronic support measure suite similar to the F-35s and slash ASQ-239 system. The J-20 also seems to have improved data links, integrated avionics, and a cockpit with a display similar to that found on the F-35. Indeed, the J-20 presumably features avionics that are essentially comparable to that found on the F-22 and F-35, but which are not quite as polished as their American counterparts. 
The J20 possesses a sensor suite similar to the F-35 because it is likely developed primarily as a long-range strike aircraft meant to threaten American bases and marine assets in the Pacific. It would also likely have a role in disrupting American air operations during wartime by attacking U.S. aerial refueling tankers and airborne assets, such as the e 3 a w a c s E-8JSTARs, or E-2D Hawkeye, and other similar support aircraft with long-range air-to-air missiles using its combination of speed and stealth. It is probably not meant to immediately engage American fifth-generation fighters, such as the F-22 or F-35, unless in self-defense. By contrast, the Russian Su-57 is a dedicated air superiority vehicle that is designed to chase down American jets like the F-22 and F-35. Whether it is effective or not is another thing. The final fact is that the Russians and the Chinese had different needs and design priorities that drove them to make various sacrifices when designing their respective fifth-generation fighters.